Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of This Week in the World of Football. This is episode number 335 for February 13th, 2024. I'm your host, Randy Snow. On this week's show, the Kansas City Chiefs are now back-to-back -back Super Bowl champions. The NFL Honors Ceremony gave us our 2024 Hall of Fame class and many more awards, such as the League MVP and Coach of the Year. But I'm not here all by myself. Across the table from me, as always, is my son, Adam. Yep, another NFL season has come and gone, and... Uh... It doesn't feel like it yet because there is still so much coverage on yeah. uh, sports talk. It, it takes uh, so many days just to kind of get yeah. all the Super Bowl stuff out of everybody's system. I mean, that first day, you know, like the CBS morning crew, you know, yeah. they were there at the game the night before. They they flew back to New York and were there the next morning. And they were, uh, Nate Burleson was still in Las Vegas and they were still doing interviews and, and you know, reactions. It's wild. It's just so much coverage so far. Yeah, and we're expected to condense that into a nice one-hour podcast here. We'll try our best. Or less. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, is that all for you? Okay. I guess, yeah. We come to you each week from the fabulous world of football man cave, located right here in the center of the football world, Kalamazoo, Michigan. We're here to promote the game of football in all its many forms, past, present, and future. Our goal is to educate, inform, and entertain our listeners with the glorious buffet that is the world of football. All this while keeping a close eye on the rich history of the game. Thanks for checking out our podcast. We'd love to get your feedback on one of our many platforms. Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music. So you can simply ask your Alexa device to play the World of Football podcast. We also have timestamps down in the descriptions of both the podcast and many of our YouTube videos. So you can go right to the topics you really want to listen to. You can also find our podcast in its full audio form on our YouTube channel. Just search for The World of Football Kalamazoo or use the handle at The World of Football in the YouTube search bar. So you can also find uh, other selected videos on our YouTube channel like uh, a little history lesson we did the other day, uh, Black History Month feature, a profile of quarterback Warren Moon. Uh, going from the CFL to the NFL. And we've got a few more coming this month. Uh, look for those possibly on Thursday, every Thursday. Oh, so every Thursday, for yep. the rest of, for the rest month. of the month. Yep. yep. And uh, I don't know which ones, because you, you've got three more you recorded. I'm we just record, kind of going to grab one and start editing it. Recorded four of them all in one day, and uh, which was kind of a big deal for us. But uh, yeah, we've, we've got uh, three more coming. So the first one, Warren Moon is out there. Check that out. All right, so uh, let's begin today's show, and we're going to start with Adam, of course, and the NFL. All right, yeah, you know, a, a little game kind of happened this weekend. Was uh, there a game this weekend? Yeah, or? you know, it's called uh, the Superb Owl, uh -huh. uh, but, I mean, we like to call it the Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, so Super Bowl 58, or L-V-I-I-I, -I -I, uh, for those of you who know your Roman numerals. Um, I thought they were going to give that up after 50. I am I am a little shocked that they have kept with it yeah, after too. fifty, me but too. I mean, hey, it's a staple, and I mean they, I mean, not to get ahead of ourselves, they also did release the logo for next year's Super Bowl. Yeah, I know you're not a fan of it. I'm not, uh, but I'm I'm literally looking at a thread here about the person who came up with it, and I I need to uh, uh, look into that a little bit. Maybe we can talk about that later. But it's anyway, kind of cartoonish. It is, but um, just kind of reading. This piece right here, it uh, looks like there's some story behind it. Uh, this uh, girl that made it. Okay. Um, so maybe it'll turn me around on it. Anyway, we, we got a game that just happened we got to talk right. about. The Kansas City Chiefs uh, and the 49ers played. Uh, final score, the Chiefs beat the 49ers 25-22 to in overtime. The game obviously took place in Las Vegas, and Patrick Mahomes yet again wins his third MVP. So it is official. The Kansas City Chiefs are now a... Dynasty. I, I uh, think so. It's official. I mean, you won three Super Bowls in the last five years. It It's an achievement. I know people are t already getting sick of the Chiefs, but I'm sorry. I I get it. Like, we hate seeing teams perpetually win. But at the same time, people also complain like, oh, my gosh, it's a new team every year. There's no consistently good team. You can't have it both ways. So, look, I think right now, yeah, it sucks that the Chiefs are winning all this game, but you know what? Go out and beat the Chiefs then. Same right. with when the, the Patriots were playing. I'm sorry. Those were good teams. Like Detroit did earlier this yeah, week. Yeah. This yeah. Well, let's, I'm, <laughs> wow. Who had four minutes into the podcast before Randy brought up the Lions? I was going to not even bring up Detroit today, oh, but come on. you just did it. Anyway, let's talk about this game a little bit. So 
What did you think of the game? It was extremely boring through about three and a half quarters. Nobody could do crap. Mahomes couldn't do crap. Uh, uh, Brock Purdy couldn't do crap. It was a boring, stinking game through four and a half quarters. And then, finally, we got some action in the fourth quarter. Yeah, there's a great meme of the poorly drawn horse uh, for the first couple of quarters turning into the great drawn <laughs> horse at the end of the game. Did you see that meme? No, I did not. Uh, I think I still got it on my phone. It, it's a it's a meme. You know, people will go around yeah. and, and share with... Uh, it's all about the memes. It is all about the memes. I guess it's not on my phone right now. But, uh, it you know, you know it if you see it. But, look, I think, yeah, a lot of people are going to be saying, oh, this was a great game. It was a great game. Hold on time out here last year was a great game and i even said last year during that super bowl it was a great game with a crappy last two minutes because the chiefs ended up the last two minutes kneeling it down and kicking a field goal that's boring Uh, otherwise it was a great game that those two teams played last year this year it was a terrible game with a phenomenal ending right yeah but you know when you get a phenomenal ending like that people will change the narrative in retrospect and be like, oh, what a great game that oh, ended yeah. up. No, 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 hold on. I wanna, I'm want to. i going to be on record as saying that was a crappy game that just so happened to have some of the best quarter and a half of football at the end of the game. 10-3 at halftime, uh, one one touchdown and two field goals. It, it was, on. yeah. It, But, yeah, let's uh, real quick, the field goals. Uh, let's give Jake Moody and uh, Harrison Bucker some love. Yes. Uh, both of them kicked... Record field goals during the game because Jake Moody hit the 55-yarder to yep. set the Super Bowl record. He, he held the record for a couple of quarters. <laughs> and then Bunker hit the 57-yarder. He did. Yeah. Son so, of a gun. So that was that was actually kind of a cool thing to happen. We had two kicking records broke yep. right there in, in the Super game. Bowl. And that'll get overshadowed by everything that Mahomes did. In, yeah. In the end of the uh, but, I mean, that I wanted to yeah, get that out there. Um, but also that the... 49ers did play better than the Chiefs for the most part of this game. They had a 10-point lead again yeah. going into the fourth quarter, I want to say. Yeah. Uh, last year, the Chiefs were down by 10 going into the fourth quarter against the Eagles as well. So the Chiefs the Chiefs know how to come back. What do you got? You're, you're smirking over there. I was just going to say, uh, how does it feel, San Francisco, to have a uh, uh, lead at halftime and uh, lose the game? Oh, well, that wasn't that. as bad as Detroit. <laughs> That's not even... I'm sorry. Even I'm holding, I wasn't I'm holding on to that. You can't take that away. Yeah, from okay. Me. But <laughs> so I, th- I think the 49ers really played a little better than the Chiefs. They, I mean, not that they played great, but McCaffrey looked great. Yes. Um, who was it? The it wasn't Ayuk and it wasn't uh, Debo Samuel. They didn't do much during the game. It was their third wide receiver. And Kittle was a, pretty much a and non-factor in the whole game. Kittle, yeah, Kittle being a non-factor was shocking. Um, but. I, I can't believe I'm blanking on it because he's the only other player to ever throw and catch touchdowns oh, in a yeah. Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, I can't think of his name. I forget his name. I apologize. I don't want to look it up. We're just going <laughs> to power through it. But that was a great play. That was the – Yeah. Which – Yep. I'm sorry. Maybe that shouldn't have counted as a pass be, or as a touchdown pass because it was it was more of a run. McCaffrey did most of the work well, there yeah, but... on that play. But McCaffrey was great. Uh, I think – and both running backs have been crucial fumbles during the game, uh, Pacheco and uh, – McCaffrey there, but the the big play of the game, I think the turning point play of this game, I think San Francisco wins. Yeah, they had some clock management stuff maybe at the end of the game, but this is the play that changed everything, and it was the punt that hit a 49er player's leg and oh, gave yeah. the Chiefs great yep. field position In the inside zone. the red zone. That changed the complexion of that game. If the 49ers get that ball back, they eat up a little more clock. Maybe they go kick a field goal. Maybe they don't. Maybe they give the ball back to the Chiefs. But the Chiefs don't get the ball in the red zone, which is money for Patrick Mahomes. So, I mean, the 49ers did a good job keeping them out of there. But the moment Patrick Mahomes gets in there, they're getting points one way or the other. So that was a big mistake by San Fran. And it was just such a fluky play. And, gee, San Francisco, now you get to know what it's like to be on the other end of a fluky play there. I'll give you that one uh, after what happened to Detroit in the NFC Championship. But so I I don't know this was a very close game between the two teams, which is nothing wrong with that. But it's just, boy, they for being t- – you know, the Chiefs, the team we've always talked about, we, they were already on a downslide this year. We talked about how they weren't the same right. Chiefs team. And the San Francisco team, who everybody was saying was the best team in the league for much of the season, up until the Ravens kind of were the talk of the town. But the uh, 49ers, despite being the best team, losing to the Chiefs, I think it it goes without saying, you not that you don't bet against Patrick Mahomes, but it's 
The Chiefs have that experience. When you have Andy Reid as your head coach, when you have Patrick Mahomes as your quarterback, and when you have Travis Kelsey as kind of a a safety valve type of guy who when right. he gets the ball, in that first half he had one catch for like a yard. Right. Second half, eight catches, 70-something yards. So totally different game at that point. Right. Uh, but when you have those three guys, even if they everything else isn't working, when it gets down to it and if they are within striking distance, they can make stuff happen. And that's what they did. They have that experience. Look how they handled the end of that game. And then in overtime... The the fact that these Niners players were admitting to not knowing the rules. I didn't know the rules. I mean, we all, I mean, I kind of understood it as it was kind of the same where it was the, everybody gets a possession no matter what. Right. Uh, I mean, they do the same in the NFL regular season, but it's, yeah, if you score a touchdown first, though, the game's over. But I knew in the postseason that was different. But well, what I wasn't clear on was the, because the clock was coming down there at the end for the right. Chiefs. And that was like, oh, shoot, are they going to not score before time runs out? Is that it? But the way Tony Romo made it sound was that even if the clock hit zero in overtime, since it's still the middle of the Chiefs' possession, it'll go like it's a second quarter. Like okay. the game technically starts over in overtime, so yeah. it would be a second quarter of Switch overtime. the field and yeah. just keep going. Yeah, is score. supposedly how that would work. Okay. I was getting nervous about that, but the, the Chiefs were playing so calmly that uh, that's clearly what was happening. Yeah. Whether or not everybody else realized that, no. I don't. I can't speak for. What were you about to say? Well, I was just going to say that uh, uh, I, I will give some credit to Brock Purdy. He played extremely well in this game. He never, uh, he never got too flustered. Oh, uh-huh, that's not true. He never got sacked. Mm. Uh, did he? Did he get sacked? I think he got sacked at least well, once. Well, anyway, he he just he just kept plugging away, and he, you know he would he would he didn't uh, give up, and he was still fighting all game long, but. Patrick Mahomes has it. Yep. You can't determine what it is, but he's got it. And when he gets the ball, you know, he knows when to pass, when to throw it away, and when to take off and run. And he did that masterfully in that last drive. That last drive, keep it was things all going. him. I think, yeah. yeah. You know, how many times him. have we seen that? You give Patrick Mahomes the ball, I don't care if he's way back in his own end, end of the stadium, he's going to find a way to work that team down the field, whether it's get them close to get a field goal, whether it's, you know, going on fourth and whatever to, to keep a drive going, he's going to do it. And at least, at least seven times out of 10, he's going to do it. He'll, he'll do it a lot of the time. He'll and last it. year he did it on two bum ankles. Yeah. Uh, which was impressive because remember last year he had the, he had a big run last year where we're like oh my god how did he do that on yeah, those that two last ankles? play that that the, uh, the guy hit him out of bounds yeah. which got him another fifteen yards which basically won the game there but yeah uh, he just I've I've been saying you know you never you never count out Patrick Mahomes and in the regular season yes he was struggling at times they lost some games they probably shouldn't have lost uh, not the Detroit game that was definitely a, our win but. Uh, you know, when it comes down to the bottom line, what they had to go through to get to the Super Bowl, one home game in the freezing cold, a game in Buffalo in the freezing cold, a game in Baltimore in not so great A very weather. hostile environment right. against a team that everybody was saying was the best team in the right. league. And they were, they were, people were counting Kansas City out starting with the Buffalo game and, and on into the Ravens game. Oh, Kansas City's not, they're not the same team. They're not going to win. Boom, they did. They get to the Super Bowl. People weren't saying they were going to win the Super Bowl, and they did. So, yep. Do not count out Patrick Mahomes. He he, is something else. He is something else. But, I mean, you also got to go to Andy Reid. Andy Reid will go down as one of the greatest coaches of all time. I have been a big fan of Andy Reid for a lot of years now. Um, Wasn't really a fan of him when he was with the Eagles, but when he kind of came to Kansas City, I kind of changed my tune. I was like, you know what? I hope this guy gets a ring. He's a good coach. He's always got good teams. They could just never quite get over the hump. And once he got Patrick Mahomes and that magic started – you know what? I, I like them. I feel bad when they showed Travis Kelsey getting in his face uh, during the game and yelling at uh, Coach Reed. Not a great look for Mr. Kelsey. No, but no. But you know, in a game like that where he you know he knows when he's not on the field, stuff, stuff's not you know going to go their way, which didn't whenever Kelsey was off the field. So I get his frustration. It's just a bad look. Right. Uh, so I mean, people will talk about that. It's been memed to death already. Yeah. Um. I'm trying to think what else from this game itself uh, stuck out. Uh, I just, I don't know. I I think the overtime rules were great. I think it worked. Yeah. I you know, If you're San Francisco, and everybody's going to criticize Shanahan for taking the ball first, which I, you know what, that's hindsight. Hindsight's 20-20. Right. Well, well, now, oh, yeah. But in that situation, it's, well, yeah, you want the third possession in case you do score a touchdown, then they score a touchdown. 
Well, if the other team goes for two points, then you've lost. Well, yeah, at that point... Or you've won because they didn't... Right. At that point, that's out of your control, which a lot of this was out of his control. Um, But, he, you know, he went down, he got the field goal. It was up to his defense to either hold him to a field goal to get that third possession back, or the game's over, which is what happened. The Chiefs went down, and they were able to get it in the end zone. But at that point, you know, I mean, just the criticism of him taking the ball. Like, no, that's what you... Doing that yeah. situation, yeah, it's it's an overtime where if there's three possessions, you want that third possession. It's not college where you want the second one where it's like okay they went for it or they only. So I mean the Chiefs lucked out because okay they saw they all they did was a field goal we get a touchdown it's done right and when the Chiefs had that mindset different I mean if the 49ers would have deferred and let the Chiefs go down first say the Chiefs go down and score a touchdown there's no guarantee the Niners would have gone down and scored a touchdown anyway you would kind of want that. You know, opportunity opportunity to at least know what the situation is. Right. Like, okay, we have to score a touchdown. At least we know the stakes. But there, if you're the Niners, it's they ran a bunch of clock. They went down, and they got three points. I mean, their defense has to step up after that. So I don't know. You, I don't think you can criticize them that much. I think no matter what they would have done, it's it's it is what it is. Yeah. I don't think it was a dumb decision by any means. It's the, there are two ways you could have gone about it, and I think. Either way could have won you the game, and either way could cost you the game. So, All right. Well, let's get into some of the other things around the game itself. Uh, it, this was, uh, according to what I saw, the most watched telecast in history, in television history, averaging 123.4 million viewers across all platforms. And that's how you get that most watched thing. You know, back when they had the moon landing or the, uh, the finale of the MASH TV series, uh, they didn't have all these other streaming services do, uh, doing all this live at the same time. So, yeah, that's where it comes from, that this was the most watched thing. But it, uh, it still was a, a really good game. I mean, uh, yeah, I, like the thing I saw said it since the moon landing. So I, I took it as it wasn't as many as the moon landing. Mm-hmm. But, it, I mean, obviously anywhere around the moon landing numbers would be crazy. But right. I, we figured, I mean, this was brought broadcast on CBS nationally, right. then on their Paramount Plus streaming service. And it was simulcast on Nickelodeon with a separate Nickelodeon broadcast, which we you don't even have in your notes. Uh, the fact that SpongeBob and Patrick Starr were commentators during the game, mm. that they had the two actors with the motion capture stuff on their face, uh, with Nate Burleson, and I forget who his guy was. They had four people there in the booth, but it was cool seeing the animated Patrick and, and SpongeBob there doing some of the game. They had like Dora the Explorer. Uh, explaining some, explaining of the some of the rules, and they had a bunch of other shenanigans. There's a whole video you could watch a bunch of the YouTube mashups. I haven't seen a whole lot of that. There was a lot of funny stuff. They showed Travis Kelsey uh, with like a, a different thing under his name, like Travis Kelsey, tight end, uh, Taylor Swift's boyfriend, like something, <laughs> you know, something silly like that, or or he's good at football right. was his description. Like yeah. so fun stuff. And I think if you're a kid, that broadcast probably would have been very appealing. Probably. Um, probably. It seemed fun from some of the highlights I saw. Yeah. And then the attendance at the game. I looked this up uh, this morning. The attendance was 61,629, the lowest ever for a Super Bowl, other yes. other than uh, the one where there were only 22,000 fans there for Super Bowl 55 because of COVID uh, restrictions. Yeah. Uh, that was the one where Tampa Bay beat. Interesting. So you're telling me a Super Bowl in Las Vegas had less people than in Detroit. Yes. Interesting. Maybe yep. we should bring a Super Bowl back to Motown <laughs> and play it at Ford Field. Well, the, the ironic thing is this was lower than Super Bowl One, and Oof. people talk about how poorly attended Super Bowl One was because nobody really, you know, uh, knew that this was going to be something uh, uh, extraordinary. So, uh, yeah, uh, the uh, oh, the Super Bowl One was sixty-one thousand. Uh, 946. So this was like 300 less. It is interesting because the capacity for Allegiant Stadium is just like Ford Field. That's 65,000 seats. Hmm. How the heck did they not sell 4,000 uh, tickets? I mean, oh. granted, they were an arm and a 10, leg each. 10,000 yeah. a piece. Can you imagine being a 49ers fan going there, spending $10,000 on the cheapest seat and watching your team lose? Uh, I would never do that. Yeah, that's just... I, I have not heard this story. just way too much money. Well, I mean, clearly it's with the NFL, uh, you know, they don't want that kind of story to get out there. I don't know where you saw this story, but... Uh, uh, I think that came, came from Adam Schefter. Okay, I see. I'm looking at an article here from uh, Mike Florio from Pro Football Talk. Lowest attendance for any non-pandemic edition of the game. Yep. Wow. That's what I saw. Official. Yep. Dang. Like, that is just so crazy to me when... 
when it's seats 65,000 people. Well, maybe they didn't have all those seats available. Maybe they had to take some out for for the DJ. This, yeah, yeah, for the DJ and uh, who knows what. Oh my else. goodness! Yeah, that's just that's wild to me. A waste of time. Having wild to me that that's what happened. Yeah, that's, that's what I read. Uh, Taylor Swift screen time. A, a total of fifty four seconds during the game. You know what? If I if I was going to be a betting man and like if the, if I would have saw o- <laughs> over or under sixty seconds, I don't know if that was a uh, if it, pro- it had to have been. It, it probably was. Yeah, probably I just was. didn't look that far into it. But had I actually was like, I'm going to spend a hundred dollars on any bet, I would have felt very confident. If it was an over under of sixty seconds, hmm. I would have bet the under. Hmm. I figured they were gonna, like they're going to try to get it real close to about a minute to put in Taylor on TV, but they don't want to push it. So. You know, I think it'll be just under a minute. I man, I would have made some money. But also, check this out. I just saw an article from Variety that said twenty percent of viewers uh, rooting for, or twenty percent of viewers during the Super Bowl were rooting for the Kansas City Chiefs because of Taylor Swift solely. Well, they said the women viewership was way up because yeah. of her. Yeah, oh, I'm sure. It was just the Taylor Swift impact is not undeniable. Right. I mean, it's like but, the Weird Al effect when he does a, a parody song. The original artist's uh, music goes up, and he yeah. just, they get more play. Yeah, <laughs> but so uh, that's what Taylor Swift and Weird Al have in common. But what's also crazy about that is, even though she was only on screen during the game for fifty-four seconds, I mean, we got an alert during the game from ESPN saying, "Watch this video of Taylor Swift chugging a beer during one of the commercial breaks," yeah, and it's, it's just the cell phone footage of her on the jumbotron chugging a right. beer, like. It's America at its finest. Oh, I, I got an alert on my phone. Taylor Swift has arrived at the Super Bowl. I got that one too. I mean, <laughs> look, it's it, all this stuff about people getting mad about Taylor Swift being at the Super Bowl or being around the Chiefs. They just need to get over it. Her screen time during the AFC Championship game was 20 something seconds. Super Bowl 50, 54 seconds of your life was spent watching Taylor Swift on the TV, you know. During the bro- a four hour broadcast, that game was long too. Good yeah, lord, yeah, started it was. at six thirty. You didn't leave till. About ten thirty, I think. It was eleven thirty at night. Was I it feel 11:30? like it was late. Oh no, yeah, we watched some of the post game. Yeah, you watched too. a little bit post game. I didn't get to bed till about midnight after the but game. I think the game, yeah, didn't get over around ten thirty. Ten thirty, so. almost eleven o'clock. So it was a long game, yeah. but you know, people just get over it. It's not that much. You don't complain about Matthew McConaughey sitting on the <laughs> the court side of you know Texas basketball games you didn't complain about Jack Nicholson sitting courtside at Lakers games or I saw, uh, Spike Lee at the Knicks yeah. games so get over it I saw a video where Paul McCartney was there and he went over to her uh luxury booth and shook hands with her and oh, okay. t- they talked for a few I minutes. saw Roger Gell do the same she thing. introduced Paul McCartney to uh Kelsey's dad or her yeah Kelsey's dad I oh. think a- anyway you know I, I love Paul McCartney why didn't we hear about any any other celebrities that were there? I mean, there was a slew of them. I mean, what, who else was it? I mean, J- there was a great video of Jason Kelsey getting introduced to Ice Spice by Taylor Swift. <laughs> like, it's just all the, everybody's like, didn't have this on my bingo yeah. card. Like, it was great. And then there's a bunch of video after the game, you know, of them partying and all, you know, whatever. Right. Yeah. But it's, look, leave Taylor alone. All right. Let, let me say this. Uh oh. When we first started hearing about Taylor Swift going to the games, I know this is how I felt. I don't know if you felt the same way. I think you did. Yeah. But we thought this was all fake. The whole rela- the relationship with her and Travis Kelsey, I thought was man-made or is made by a publicist or something to bring attention to both of them or whatever. Uh, it, obviously, I was wrong about that. It's a real relationship. Uh, whether it you know, ends in marriage or whatever, I don't know. But obviously, it is a real relationship. So, so I was I was wrong about that. That yeah. in the beginning. It is what it is. Hey, look, I think Travis is a heck of a personality. Clearly some anger issues. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, they clearly are happy. And, you know, Taylor, you know, she was committed. I mean, she flew all the way from Japan yeah. to get to that game. And, yep. look, whatever. Let's let's just be done with it. They they are inconsequential to us enjoying football. They're just a part of it now. They're in the orbit right. of football now. It'll just be something you kind of mention in passing. And I think it'll be something eventually people will just get numb to, like, like I said, a, a McConaughey on the sideline, mm-hmm. or of a basketball game, or a Jack Nichols. It's it's whatever. It's it's a it shouldn't even be that big of a deal. Yeah, people just need to stop. Like, okay, oh yeah, Taylor Swift's there again. All right, cool. Let's get back to the game. Okay, some other things that we noticed: uh, the pregame flyover by the Air Force Thunderbirds, and the little fireworks they had off the top of the stadium. What's the problem with that? Uh, nobody inside the stadium saw either of those unless they were watching the jumbo. I mean, isn't it a clear dome? What a waste of time! Isn't you got a dome clear? stadium, but you got fireworks going off, and you got uh, 
the Air Force Thunderbirds going over, which are based right there in Las Vegas, by the way, Nellis Air Force Base. But uh, yeah, what a what a dumb thing to put a lot of money into. They shouldn't even bothered with it. You want to do a flyover? He'll do a bunch of drones flying over the the field or something. I don't know. Okay, well, before you get to this other thing, let's jump because we're going to stick with stuff in the game. Then we'll talk about commercials and all this stuff around oh. there. Uh, the halftime show. Uh-huh. We always talk about the halftime show. Right. You're not familiar with Usher too much. Uh, I knew one song. Uh-huh. That, uh, what is it? Hey, Hey or something? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's the only one I've ever heard because, as I've said before, they used to play it at the Rampage Games uh, Arena Football in Grand Rapids. Yeah. So I mean that was that was a big part of uh, you know a lot of the little snippets of songs that they would play during timeouts and breaks and whatever. Mm. So that's the only one I knew from from the whole performance. And after I watched the the halftime show, I just thought, eh, that was okay. But the more I think about it, and the more I've seen so many replays of all the stuff he did, um, it, it was pretty impressive. It, look, the showmanship is there. Yeah, he, he's got the show in Vegas. I don't know if that was his regular dancers or if that was Cirque du Soleil at certain points. He had pole dancers falling off the poles. Um, <laughs> I didn't see that. There's I one heard... guy that got shot up in the air, and I don't know what happened to that dude. I heard that a skater fell off the platform. Oh, that! And I had me. I didn't see that, but I mean he had the he had the marching band there, and and they were dancing around. Um, you know, he just... was sweating like he was playing oh, yeah. in that game. <laughs> yeah, just the fact that you know he had a, a couple of different. Uh, Outfit changes, you yeah. know, and and then he comes Three out and, and he's roller skating. You know, that's pretty. Okay, that, okay. it was at that point. It was at the roller <laughs> skating point that I knew. You know what? This is pretty impressive. It was. Like, uh, it's it uh, as far as the stage and everything, not as impressive as like we talked about last year. We talked about Katy well, Perry. You know, the Katy yeah. Perry set, the Lady Gaga yeah. set, the uh, the one in SoFi where they had like the house and all oh, the rappers yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Th- those stages, those setups that those artists all had are some of the best ever. This one was a more traditional. It was a, a flat set, essentially. More focused on the performance the, of the performer, yeah, not the stage. With, yeah, but the stage lit up. and There was one point where oh, yeah. he had like a clock, and he was like standing at a certain point, and it cast a shadow. On the, I was like, that was a pretty cool image, but only if you were kind of looking from the top would you ever notice that. But I, you know, the roller skating thing was kind of cool. There was a little trippy at one point because they had the the effects on the right on the floor on the floor moving. I was like, "Holy <laughs> smokes, that's tripping me out!" That would have been tough for the but dancers he, and yeah. the roller skaters. But he was to block that out. But Usher himself was skating around, mm. still doing it. I never got one sense of him phoning it in, like being uh, auto, not auto tune. What's the term? Uh, lip syncing. Lip syncing. I didn't get any sense of that. I felt like he was doing it. Which I appreciate, even though I'm not a fan of his music. And my girlfriend and I kept saying, man, this takes us back to our middle school dances. Because <laughs> a lot of it was Usher songs. Yep. Uh, but So, while I'm not a big fan of Usher, look, showmanship-wise, dude gets an A. A for showmanship. It was entertaining. And the fact that you brought out roller skates and flexed, you know, that you can perform and be on roller skates at the same time, that goes a long way with me. Yep. Uh, and, you know, bringing out Lil John. And uh, Ludacris there at the end. You had her on the guitar. That was crazy. Alicia Keys showing up. Yep. And I did see a video, and I don't know if this is 100% true, of the live broadcast where her voice kind of cracked during the performance. Mm. They fixed it on the YouTube version of oh, the really? Oh, they fixed it. Because she does have like a little bit of a voice crack to start her piano part that when they cut to her. They totally, oh, yeah, they're changing it. They're, so when you go back, you'll never remember that that happened live. And and you were asking about the one guy that had like the the helmet and the goggles on. That was Will I Am. Was there a guy with helmet time, and goggles on? Yeah, you didn't you didn't know who that was. And it was hard to tell, but I heard I later on that, that was that was Will I Am. I don't, the the one that I wasn't sure about was I, I knew who the I was like the, this guitar playing chick is somebody. I just didn't know who it was, and that was her H E R. I said that, and you guys weren't sure who it was. Yeah, but the only reason I knew that is because she did a nationwide car commercial, uh, and she's playing the guitar, and I recognized her from that. Interesting. So, uh, gotcha. Okay. So even I knew that before you did. So okay. One for me. Fascinating. <laughs> but overall, look, I'm not gonna say it's a top ten halftime performance, but it might be in the conversation now. It, it was entertaining. Like I said, it was it was much better than I originally thought as I was watching it live. I was just kind of like, eh, well, whatever. And as we but can say every looking year, looking back, now, it was pretty darn impressive. As we can say every year now, it definitely wasn't the weekend's performance. So. Better than that, yeah, yep. absolutely. If we said that last year about <laughs> last year's halftime show, we'll say it about this year. Yep. Hey, camp is it better it's, than the weekend. It's better than the weekend. <laughs> All right, uh, best and worst commercials. Well, hold on. Okay, oh. so uh, I because I jumped over this, so I'll get back to it for you. 
They did the kick of destiny with Gronk again. Oh yeah. Uh he missed it again. Right. Yep. And they had a nice tribute to Carl Weathers, which we figured might yes. happen. Yeah. Uh, which was nice that yep. they did. Yep. Uh so yep, take that for what you will. You made that a bullet point, so I was bringing it back around okay. for you. Okay. Uh now let's get into some of the commercials. Uh, my my favorite anyway was the uh, uh, the State Farm commercial with Arnold Schwarzenegger and oh yep that was probably Danny the DeVito best one but and I think maybe even better than that was the Christopher Walken BMW Ooh, that's up there. where everybody he went up to was imitating his yeah, no, the way he talked <laughs> I drive a BMW <laughs> I love that one that was uh, pretty good there was the the Reese's uh, peanut butter cup commercial oh that one I'm glad you put screamed, that down no yeah the- no. <laughs> yeah, that one, I'm glad you put, I almost forgot about that commercial yeah. till today. I was like, I got to remember to mention that commercial. That one was great. That one was really good. Uh, let's see what else I have down here. There was a political ad for Robert F. Kennedy Jr. running for uh, president as an independent. And I heard today on the news that he apologized for that because he was like superimposing his face over his dad's face. Ooh. And a lot of people did not like that, and he's he's apologized for that. But, Oof. man, $7 million for, for a commercial like that, to, to, for a presidential... I've never seen a presidential campaign ad during the Super Bowl. That, that, I mean, that was the first thing that struck me was, a political you know candidate has got a commercial during the Super Bowl? It's a ballsy and, move. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? Pluto TV and their couch potatoes. That one I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to. You were it watching, was, I think was, I was cleaning I up. I smiled at that because oh, they had okay. all these people, you know, dressed up like potatoes and they're out in the field yeah. and they're, they're bringing these TVs and they're putting a TV in front of everybody, you know, in the fields, planting them in the dirt or whatever. Uh, it was, it was kind of cute. I don't know if you'll see that much anymore, but, uh, I did kind of like that one. Uh, the Paramount Plus commercial with Patrick Stewart and a bunch of the other Yeah, they released that a couple weeks ago. The only thing I like about that is that Patrick Stewart wears an old leather head, uh, you know, leather helmet, uh, old time football, football outfit. uniform. That, yeah. to me, that was the best thing. I don't even care what was going on in the background. And he grabs, you know, Arnold, uh, from Hey Arnold, yeah. from Hey Arnold football head and throws, throws him. Yeah. Whatever. It was a good commercial. Like, that, that, that one's good. Um, what other ones? Because you got a bunch on there. Uh, you'll talk about your worst one in a second. But I like the Michael Sarah Sarah V uh, facial cream. I thought that was funny. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, of course the State Farm one, you, you, which you mentioned was right. yours. I mean, come on, uh, what, what, Arnold saying uh, Neba, 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 and then Danny DeVito at the end. Yeah, saying it for him. Oh, it was great. It. <laughs> that was a good. That was a good one. Uh, I like the Baja Blast commercial with Aubrey Plaza. Oh. Where, Hi, I'm America's sweetheart. <laughs> she says it's all deadpan. And at the end, uh, Nick Offerman from Parks and Rec is right. with her. I thought that was fun. Right. Uh, th- there was that Tina Fey one, which I thought was pretty good. Uh, I forget what they were pushing. I've seen that before the Super Bowl. Uh, I don't what remember product that was. what that was, but... it was. It was like a lot of the 30 Rock people. And I was like, oh, it's cool seeing all the 30 Rock people back. And then Glenn Close shows up. And I thought that was a fun one. Um I was really disappointed with the, if you want to talk about some of the worst ones, because I agree with you about a lot of these good ones. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other ones that stuck out to me that I thought were funny, but I think you nailed them. Uh, the Timu was bad. Right. And they had so many of them, too. Dude, it, how much money did they spend on Every commercial was a Timu commercial, whether it was the same one or just a little bit of a variation. Oh, my God. Were, I wasn't even paying attention to them because they were they crappy. They were so bad. Um, I did not like the E-Trade Babies this year. No, that was... That's two years in a row I think they've had bad E-Trade Babies they commercials. They used to be the best... That oh, little yeah. kid when he was sitting in his high chair and he's puking up and yeah. <laughs> everything else. And they for a couple of years, that was the the highlight for oh. me. This E Trade baby. Last year's was bad. This year's wasn't great. And this year's playing was pickleball. Terrible. Ugh, not good. Terrible. Not good at all. Um, <laughs> but then you know me, every year, uh, your, our hot debate is, are movie trailers commercials? Absolutely not. They are. They are advertisements, <laughs> as I said last year, advertisements for feature Motion pictures. No, commercials are advertisements for products. A movie is not a product. Um, I beg you, oh, you don't know how this works. Movies are definitely products. <laughs> they are products of the studio system. Yes, that we, the masses, will go out and give our hard-earned cash for to watch. It is a product that we go buy. And, and what do you got afterwards? Oh, I remember looking at this, but uh, you know, I don't have anything to show for That's it. That's how it happens. It, it is so. a product by definition. <laughs> anyway, so as a big movie fan, go check out my YouTube channel, The Adam Snow Movie Show, if you haven't uh, done that. Shameless plug. S- shameless plug. But uh, yeah, so a lot of great movie trailers this year uh, during the Super Bowl. Uh, some of my favorite, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Kingdom of the Planet of the... It's a mouthful. 
I love this franchise. You love the original Planet of the Apes movies. I like the, the original one better. Um, you have not watched any of the new trilogy. This will be the fourth one. I've, I watched some of them. Well, you told me you've never. Well, you should love these I've movies. I've seen bits and pieces, but uh, and not to sit through the whole thing. So good. The, the last trilogy was so good. So I'm, I'm super excited for this new trilogy. It is my most anticipated film of the year. So I was, it was a great trailer. I'm looking very forward to that. It's got, it kind of seems like uh, the original movie almost, except with a lot more special effects and stuff. It looks nicer, but it seems like it's got that vibe more of the original, you know, Charlton Heston playing of the Apes. Uh, they had the Wicked trailer. That looked pretty good. Yeah. I've, I've never saw the stage I've play. I've always wanted to see the stage play. It's come to Kalamazoo a few times, yeah. the Miller Auditorium, and I've just never gone to see it, but I, I would dearly love to see it on stage, but... I'll go see it in the theater. So I'm yeah. looking forward to that. And apparently out. it's a part one. Oh, two, yeah. So they split yeah. it into two. Yeah. Even though the trailer didn't say part one. I kept calling it Wicked I Part did, One. I did hear part one. Yeah. Okay. I didn't see it in the trailer, but okay. Uh, a sequel to Twister. Twisters. Yeah, uh, you're not going to recapture the uh, magic of the first And I don't think Helen Hunt's in it, so you know Helen you lost Hunt. Randy there. Uh, well, I... <laughs> I loved her in in that Twister movie. And yeah. I, I don't think it'd be the same with her. In Maybe it. not, but I like Glenn Powell. He's the lead of this one. He was in Top Gun Maverick. Um, so I, we'll see how that goes. Uh, trailer for A Quiet Place, day one. You've never watched these movies. I have. I love the uh, the first two. This is like a prequel. So uh, I'm looking forward to that one. I think it's a fun one. And uh, Deadpool and Wolverine was kind of the big one everybody was talking about. I think I just saw it was the most watched trailer in the first 24 hours of its mm. release. So even though it was just a teaser, you didn't get to see Hugh Jackman like I thought we would, but right. a lot of Deadpool in it, uh, doing Deadpool stuff. You've never watched a full Deadpool no, movie. No, I have not. Um, uh, but did it pique your interest at all? Um, I don't know. I, don't, I could take it or leave it, I guess. Okay, interesting. All right, well. Which is unusual because normally I'm right there for every I mean, it's follow all. I figured you'd be all about this one, but now that it's Deadpool coming into the Marvel Universe, if, there be in, you know, if that would pique your interest a little bit to... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Have Batman ones. or Superman in it? I mean, they can make Wonder jokes. Woman. Oh, he's made DC jokes oh, in those man. Deadpool movies before, so it wouldn't surprise me. But all right, so that's it for kind of all the. Unless you got other stuff you want no. to bring up. All right, no. that's our little sidetrack around the Super Bowl. Now I guess we can bring it back to Randy because we got uh, some actual NFL news to finally get to uh, at the thirty-seven and a half minute mark. Yeah. Well, we don't have time for much else, so let's go through this real quick. <laughs> Now, the NFL honors took place the Thursday night before. I watched the whole show. Keegan-Michael Key does a great job hosting I watched that. his opening monologue. It was pretty good. Yeah, the, there was a great bit where they uh, had Penn and Teller on stage, and they, they brought Roger Goodell up, and they made him disappear in a box. And, and in his place was Barry Sanders dressed like a king with a crown and a scepter and a, one of those big king robes or whatever. That was awesome. Uh, unfortunately, Goodell came back. But, um, yeah, here, here's some of the, well, I don't know if we'll do everyone. You got the complete I've list here. I've got the complete here, list here, but uh, starting out with uh, the MVP for last season, uh, nobody's surprised, Lamar Jackson. Well, except for one guy. There was one guy who voted for Josh Allen, apparently. <laughs> but Lamar Jackson is your MVP for last season, Baltimore Ravens uh, quarterback. Offensive Player of the Year, Christian McCaffrey from the 49ers. Defensive Player of the Year, Miles Garrett uh, from the Cleveland Browns. Coach of the Year, Kevin Stefanski from the Browns. And no, this is where I took a yeah, little bit. You, of, you thought the guy from uh, the it should have the either Texans. been D'Amico Ryan from the Texans yeah. or it should have been Dan Campbell. Granted, oh, yeah. uh, give Stefanski credit; he did have to deal with a lot of quarterbacks just to get that team to the postseason. Right, so, right. but I mean, D'Amico Ryan was a first-year head coach and turned that team around. Mm -hmm. Dan Campbell. You know, yeah, they missed the playoffs last year, but look at the turnaround he made with that yeah, team. All the like, way to the end. Well, of course, you know, they, they don't do playoffs. I get that, but it, it's not but still, the, the work that Dan Campbell, just to change a culture of an organization, yes. should have been, uh, you know, yes. praise enough. So I, I think they got this one wrong. Mm -hmm. I might even say they got the MVP wrong with Lamar Jackson, but that might be a hot take, mm -hmm. but that's just me. <laughs> uh, but I think Coach of the Year, and there's one other award I definitely think they got wrong. Um, we'll talk about it in a second. Will that be assistant coach of the year, Jim Schwartz, former Lions coach, now a defensive coordinator? I actually of the don't Browns. have a problem. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, the Cleveland defense was a story all year. They were great. Right. So, comeback player of the year, Joe Flacco with the Browns. That might be the one I have the problem with. Really? Uh, when who else you, had a better comeback season? When you have a player who was legally dead on your playing uh, field true. the year before, and he, while he didn't play as much, I think this year, uh, Obviously, I think still to 
one, be brought back to life literally on a football field. True. To go through what he had to go through to even get back, you know, to even playing in any amount of game mm-hmm. might have deserved a bit more recognition. Yeah. Um, but I get where look, and it's nothing against Joe Flacco. He's got a great comeback story too. Right, if we could right. give out a two, you know, give it to both of them, I would love to. But I just the fact that we had a dude come back from the dead and play in football. If that's not the definition of a comeback, I don't know what is. I mean, sure, Joe Flacco was raking leaves when he got the t- <laughs> the, the call from the Browns. Well, but if if it's a if it's a choice between uh, two guys and one of them's a quarterback, the quarterback's going to get the, the maybe. Recognition. But, but br- let me emphasize again: brought back from <laughs> the dead. Like, in I just don't get that. Yeah. I just, I mean. Like I said, it's nothing against Joe Flacco. He at any other year, I would totally say, yeah, Joe Flacco totally deserved this award. But the Demar Hamlin thing, I just, I don't want to say it should have been a gimme because nothing should be a gimme. But it's just like the circumstances, the fact he actually, if he didn't come back and play, it'd probably be a different story. He played a little bit. That's an achievement. Come on now. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Offensive Rookie of the Year, CJ. Sam Laporta. How is this not Sam Laporta? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> CJ Stroud yeah. deserved it. Yeah, there was a couple CJ of, Stroud deserved it. Couple of Lions rookies that maybe, but CJ, CJ he a quarterback out. again. You know, quarterback's going to get it. By Fair, default. but if you look at what he did, though, he just looked absolutely great this year. So CJ deserves it. Yeah. Defensive rookie of the year, Will Anderson Jr. from the Texans. That's funny because last year it was the Jets who had offense and defensive rookie of the year. Garrett yeah. Wilson, the wide receiver, and then um, Sauce Gardner, the defensive back. So that's two years in a row now that teammates have won offense and defensive player or rookie of the year. Hmm. I, I think that's – I didn't realize that till just now. That's a pretty interesting achievement. Hmm. I hadn't thought of that either. Uh, let's see. Walter Payton, man of the year. Cameron Hayward, uh, defensive lineman from the Steelers. I thought he he gave a pretty nice speech that night. I uh-huh. thought that was pretty pretty cool what he said. Tony can't tell you what he did say, but at the time I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Uh, other awards. Uh, NFL moment of the year. C.D. Lamb's 91-yard touchdown reception against the Lions. Which actually should have been a Dak safety, but yeah. whatever. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Salute to service. Joe Cardona. A long snapper from the Patriots, FedEx Air Player of the Year, Brock Purdy, uh, FedEx Ground Player of the Year, Christian McCaffrey, another pair of uh, uh, teammates there, Bud Light Celebration of the Year, Tommy DeVito Celebration, they were showing a little bit of that, I could tell you, you know, I don't remember watching it or why it made that so special, Yeah. Uh, Angry Run of the Year, Najee Harris with the Pittsburgh Steelers, Art Rooney Sportsmanship Award, Bobby Wagner, linebacker for the Seahawks, Jim Brown Award, Christian McCaffrey. How many awards is this guy going to get this year? He should have uh, gotten MVP, but <laughs> yeah. that's a hot take, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Deacon Jones Award, uh, TJ Watts from the Steelers. Flag Football Player of the Year, Allison Gandlin. Um, NFL Fan of the Year, Tom Grossi. Yeah. Now, we followed his uh, little journey, you know, 30 stadiums in 30 days, yep. and that was pretty impressive. He raised a lot of money for charity. He does a lot of good stuff for charity, he, despite know, being a Packer fan. I, I'd never heard of him until you started showing me some of his videos and this and that, and uh, uh, so now I know all about Tom Grossi, and uh, yeah, I, I think he pretty much deserves that it. one. Yep. Yeah, because of all the charity work he did this year, so congratulations to him. All right, and then your Pro Football Hall of Fame class, seven new players going in. Uh, yeah, I guess they all are players, no coaches. Yeah, Buddy uh, Buddy Parker was in, was a finalist for this and didn't uh, make the final cut. But anyway, you've got uh, defensive end and linebacker uh, Dwight Freeney, uh, played for several different teams, uh, the Colts, Chargers, Cardinals, Falcons, Seahawks, and Lions. Linebacker Randy Gratishar, uh, worked, played from 73 to 83 with the Denver Broncos. Devin Hester, wide receiver, kick returner, punt returner. Yes, he definitely has uh, needed to get in the Hall of Fame yep. for his work. Uh, 2006 to 2016, mainly with the Bears, but also played for the Falcons, Ravens, and Seahawks. Wide receiver Andre Johnson, Texans, Colts, and uh, Tennessee Titans. Steve McMichaels, uh, 80 to 94 with the Patriots. Again, he's most known for being with the Bears, but he also spent a season or two with the Packers. Um, he's in bad physical uh, shape right now. He's got, uh, what is it, uh, Lou Gehrig disease or oh. something. Yeah, he's, um, but he's still with us, and he was very appreciative. 
Uh, his wife was there to accept uh, the honors for him. Uh, defensive end Julius Peppers, the guy that I, from day one, I've been saying he should have been a Detroit Lion. He was picked by the Panthers, one pick before Detroit, and everybody thought he was coming to Detroit. Now he's a Hall of Famer. So yeah. That kind of hurts a little bit. But you know, mainly with the Panthers, also played for the Bears and Packers. And fine uh, finally, linebacker Patrick Willis, played from 20, 2007 to 2014, all of his career with the San Francisco 49ers. So yeah. those are your... Inductees for the class of 2024 that'll be going in this August. Yeah. So congratulations to all of those. In some other news, uh, the NFL announced that there will be a regular season game played in Spain in 2025. Not this coming season, but the season after this. It will be uh, the first regular season game ever played in the country. It'll be played at the Santiago Barabo Stadium which is home of uh, the soccer team Real Madrid. Well, well, you better be careful. You better not say soccer and Real Madrid in the same sentence. Well, football team. The football team, Real Madrid. Yep. Right, everybody knows Real Madrid. God, we don't need to get canceled because of that, Randy. Come on, <laughs> that's that's alienating a whole market over there overseas. Don't do that. Yeah, well, they're, they're going to play a game in their stadium, so I don't know if they're going to have to move a game <laughs> I doubt somewhere. It. They're probably not playing at that time. I don't know. I don't know anything about the uh, soccer schedule over there. Football schedule over there. God, it's like you haven't done this. Come on. Oh, uh, let's see. The new uh, This is something you just added. The yeah. New York Jets announced that they'll be making their throwback uniforms permanent with alterations to the green and black uniforms. Yeah, so they're going back to that New York sack exchange uh, uniform they wore uh, opening night. Remember Aaron Rodgers running out there, getting hurt. Uh, they're turning that uniform, which they wore the white jerseys for, permanent. So they're going to have a green version and a the black version. They're going to stick with the black color scheme, but they're going to go back to that... Uh, late 80s, uh, or, or late 90s Jets uniform with the jet flying over the, the, word, the jets. word Jets. Yeah. yeah. Well, with what happened to uh, Aaron Rodgers, that's really going to be a good luck uh, look yeah. for them. Yeah, we'll see. But, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I've never been as big. I liked it when the Jets changed back to, like, the Namath look. Mm. Uh, yes. In the, in the 2000s, I awesome. love that look. They, sh they should still be wearing they that. They should be, but, you know, I've... <laughs> I don't know. The, I, I don't like their current look, so I'm at least happy they're getting rid of that. Even if they're going back to this other Jets look, I'm totally fine with that. The black, though, I just don't understand. I don't yeah. understand for the Jets a black alternate. Nope. It just doesn't make sense to me. Nope. And then the last thing is uh, something we just heard uh, yesterday or this morning. Well, today has yeah. been uh, popping up on all the alerts. The Detroit Lions have signed linebacker uh, Matthew Betts. Uh, is it Matthew or Matthew? Uh, I'm, I'm going to say it's Matthew uh, it's spelled a little different, but I think it's still pronounced it still Matthew. Matthew? Oh, I, I was going to say -E -U. Huh. I, I think it's still Matthew. Uh, Matthew Betts, who played uh, in the Canadian Football League for the British Columbia Lions. So he's going from the Lions to the Lions. Yeah. He recorded 18 sacks in 18 games last season, and he was the CFL's most outstanding defensive player of 2023. Very interesting to hear about player signings this Early the, the league new league year is not till next month, so it's weird hearing about signings a, two days after the Super Bowl. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean it's one of those situations you know where people are getting the futures contracts or like you know they're just doing little roster moves here and there. Well, you know because he's coming from Canada, you know that may be different. You know maybe you can't you can't start signing other people from other teams until the start of the new uh, NFL year. But because this is a player from Canada, yeah. that doesn't apply. That's my guess. No, I'm not sure how that know, works, sure. but hey, whatever, we'll take him. Yep. That's an interesting move. Absolutely. All right, uh, now let's take a moment and uh, take a look at what's going on in the world of college football. Former Alabama head coach Nick Saban joins ESPN's College Game Day pregame show, which is, you kind of expected that. You know, He yep. was going to be on somebody's pregame show somewhere. You know what you do next now? The next news to drop will be... Bill Belichick joining him. Mm. I I am an all, NFL pregame show or an NFL pre. I am all about you know Saban doing some college football analysts, you know analytic stuff. Bill Belichick, if he, I kind of want him to do some NFL stuff. I mean, I loved watching Belichick on what was it, the top players of all time for the NFL, whatever that one thing they did. Like he knows his NFL. He's history. a historian. Yes, and I he's very knowledgeable, and when he's not. Uh, and I hate to take this away from Saban. I feel like Saban's the same way. When you get him out of that football, like the coach mode, they are just fascinating football, knowledgeable people that I could just sit there and listen to them talk about the game itself. So I think it's cool that Saban's doing this, and I'm hoping we hear about 
Belichick since he didn't get a coaching job doing the same thing in the near future. Yeah. Yeah, well, he's got plenty of uh, places to to be an NFL analyst, yeah. you know, whether it's uh, you know Amazon Prime or you know. Uh, but he was great on that college when, when, when Belichick was on College ESPN. Game Day and he rocked that mini helmet you got behind you. Well, he wore the full size of that Army helmet hmm. uh, that they wore during World War Two. I mean, just great. I think him and Saban being together on a pregame show together mm. would be very fascinating. You know, two two of the greatest coaches of all time. And I'm, I mean, obviously he's he's already a college historian too. Uh, oh, he Belichick coached, so. coached at uh, was it Army or Navy? I can't remember. Belichick did. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I think his his dad was an assistant coach, and he was an assistant to the assistant wow. or something. But yeah, it was either Army or Navy. I can't remember right off. The yeah, I didn't want to make this about Belichick, but it just made me think like, look, with Saban taking this job, right. I, I'd be curious to see what Belichick right. does. Yeah, yeah, it will be interesting to see if and what uh, uh, Belichick does uh, here in the near future about uh, you know his plans for next year. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chip Kelly has stepped down as UCLA's head coach to become the new offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Ohio State. Kelly replaces Bill O'Brien, who has taken the job as the head coach at Boston College. What a weird! I know this late uh, after the the college season's over with, and but it kind of came out of nowhere. I just I when I heard he'd signed this, I didn't even realize Chip Kelly stepped away from UCLA. Hmm. When I heard that he was going to Ohio State, I was like, what? What yeah. is that? Like, I didn't realize he was even fired from. He started out at Central Michigan uh, yeah. here in the Mid America Conference. No, no, you're, you're thinking of Brian Kelly, who was oh, the I'm current sorry. head coach of I'm LSU. Sorry. Yes, this I is am Chip that Kelly, who okay. was you know with Oregon for many years, and he went to the Eagles. They went back to college, and he was at UCLA. But I didn't realize he stepped away. I when I saw this, I was like, "What's he doing? Going to Ohio State? What a weird thing to do to yeah, go from being the head bad. coach." And then becoming the offensive coordinator. And my theory was, because I was talking to an Ohio State coworker about this, my theory is he's going to sabotage Ohio State from within <laughs> to steal Ryan Day's job. I think that's Become what's happening. Become the head coach eventually? Oh, yeah. He's going to, oh, yeah, I could work with Ryan Day all day long. Sabotage. Ohio State will have a crappy season. They're going to fire <laughs> Ryan Day. And Chip Kelly will go, you know, now that I don't have him here bothering my system, I could be the head coach of Ohio State. I don't know what was wrong with UCLA. Was he just not getting the recruiting he needed? Were they not giving him resources? Why would you leave a head coaching position? And UCLA jumping to the Big Ten. like Maybe he said to the people at Ohio State, you know what, I can beat Michigan for you. Well, okay, come on in. <laughs> you know, I, I bet you there's at least uh, 100,000 to a million people at some Ohio State bars that would say the same thing. <laughs> Oh, uh, if I were the coach, I could beat Michigan. Okay, let's settle down, guys. Let's just settle down. So, but yeah, I don't know if has has Chip Kelly been under fire from the fans or alumni I, or something at USC. I I knew nothing. Uh, this about came any as a of that. shock to me. It was yeah, it was totally out of the blue that he's you know stepping down as a head coach to take an assistant job somewhere else. That normally happens after you get fired. You know, were they going to fire him? <laughs> yeah. I I had I don't know the backstory here, and then, you know maybe that'll come out. Yeah, let us know if anybody else knows about that. Ago. Yeah, let us know. Yep. And then uh, Harvard, we we talked about this last week. Uh, Harvard has hired uh, Andrew Allrich, uh, the tight ends coach at Rutgers University, as their new fo- head football coach. He will be officially introduced, I think it's later on this week or early next week. But um, he replaces Tim Murphy, this is what we talked about last week, uh, who was the head coach at Harvard for the last 30 seasons. Uh, the decision panel included Ryan Fitzpatrick, uh, the NFL quarterback who was uh, who went to Harvard and was part of the class of 2005, and uh, and he played in the NFL for 17 years, and a guy by the name of Andrew Barry, Harvard class of 2009, who is the current general manager of the Cleveland Browns. So they were on the selection committee helping uh, the school pick out the best candidate for a coach, and there was I guess there were several uh, former alumni who were up for uh, the head coaching job, and uh, they took this guy here. Uh, uh, Andrew Allrich from Rutgers, who really didn't have any connection with Harvard. And I think a lot of the alumni were upset that he's getting the job. And uh, I guess they're, they're going to go with it. Hmm, you know? Interesting. So, yeah, there's a little bit of a backstory there. All right, um, United Football League news. Uh, today the league announced that uh, many uh, many of their new rules for the upcoming 2023 20, uh, season. Yep. I read what I have. In yeah, front of I me. feel that one, and that one's on me. <laughs> so they're gonna they're gonna keep the XFL's uh, three tiered point after try system, where you know, like uh, one point from 
From it's uh, one point from the two yard line. Yeah. A five uh, from the five yard line, it's two points, and from the ten yard line, it is three points. Okay. Yeah. I thought that was kind of a good option, you know, yeah. depending on how the game is going. If you need three, you can go for three. Uh, and then they're uh, go, going with the USFL's traditional kickoff, uh, where the XFL had the, the one where the, the two teams were like, what, 10, 20 yards apart? They're 10, uh, they're 10 yards apart. Right. Uh, and they had to kick, you know, they couldn't move until the ball was caught. Right. And ran out. So yeah. slight tweaks there. I know right. uh, Daryl Johnston was talking about their kind of – Adamacy about keeping certain USFL rules, and I'm sure the XFL sure. felt the same sure. about there. So a lot of lot of you know, uh, what's the word? Uh, give and take, compromise, compromise. Yeah, with some of these rules because there's some alterations to right. quite a few things. Yep. And another one was the uh, the fourth quarter possession options. Well, wasn't this like the second and the fourth quarter? Uh, or, um, or is it just the fourth quarter? Right now, it's, it's saying just the fourth okay. quarter. So, but yeah, if you're trailing in the fourth quarter. Uh, you can uh, or tied. You can or be tied, tied or trailing. Yeah. You have the option to go for a fourth and twelve from the twenty-eight yard line, and if you make it, you get to keep the ball. Yeah. So it's kind of like you're doing away with the onside kick. Well, and... they're, no, they're actually not. They're keeping. They said you can onside kick from oh. co- from the opening okay. kickoff to okay. any point. You could still do that as okay. an option, but they're just giving you that option now to also do the fourth and twelve from the twenty-eight. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. The onside kick, at least in the NFL, is is not very. It's not a sure thing. It's not. It's terrible, you especially just, now with the way they kind of change the like right. players. Yeah, you got to have so many on each side of the ball. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see the coaches' challenge. Uh, they can basically challenge any play. Uh, yeah, from from time. the UFL's press release, it says each coach may challenge any ruling, including fouls or potential fouls, right. one time. During the course of a contest, provided the team has a timeout remaining, a okay. successful challenge will not result in a loss of a timeout. While the timeout is lost, if the challenge is unsuccessful. And now the Canadian Football League has had something similar for yeah. a long time, where you know if, if if pass interference doesn't get called and they know for sure, you know it's happened right in front of the coaching stands, uh, the coaches on the sideline. They can throw a flag and have the referees look at that again. And I've seen instances where they say, yes, there was pass interference on that. We're going to make the call, and they get to keep the ball and spot it here. So yeah. I think it's good. But I think in the CFL you can do it more than once. Uh, but even even though they're doing it one time, I think that's a good thing. You know, If it's something really egregious that didn't get called, especially uh, in a really crucial part of the game, I think you'll see a lot of this You know, maybe in the fourth quarter where they absolutely need to keep this drive going. And, you know, fourth down, there's no pass interference call. They can at least challenge it and say, look at that again. Yeah, and it sounds like they're going to have a uh, – what we've been liking about both the XFL and the USFL is a lot of their replay reviews. Like, you know, not really stopping the game too long to get right. the calls right. right. Um, I don't want to read this whole paragraph. You could go to uh, the UFL's, you know, any of their accounts or their website. They have the full press release there. But they, you know, talk about, you know – Designated members of the officiating department uh, may not want to stop a game. I don't, yeah, I'm trying not to read this whole thing, but you know, essentially, it's a lot of the they want to keep keep you know, the flow of the game, keep though. the flow of the game. But they're also gonna, if they feel like there's a play that's gonna impact the game, that they're gonna stop and review it and all that. Uh, okay. They're gonna be off site, you know, right? Making these like stuff. in a command center, or yeah, something. like a command center type thing. So, so that sounds all good to me, and I'm all cool with that. And apparently, they got a full. You can download the whole rules at a PDF on a PDF at the right. theufl.com for those of you interested. Yeah, they're redoing their their website. I, I know if you if you look for UFL right now, it's still under the XFL. Yeah, their their um, Twitter handle or their X handle is still at XFL twenty twenty three. Right. Yeah. So they're they're supposed to be putting a new you know launching a new website here in the next uh, week or two, and then you also have. Mm, excuse me. You also have something about the overtime. Yeah. So uh, on, in this press release, overtime will consist of alternating attempts to score from the opponent's five yard line with no kicks allowed. It will be the best of three format, or until a winner has been determined. Mm. So kind of like what the USF. Oh no, the XFL did this because we were at that Battle Hawks game. Yes. And it was in overtime. Yes. And that was the first time they ever. Used yeah, the and that and we was were there pretty that. thrilling. It was. So I'll give them that. Yeah. It was. Uh, even though I came out on the losing end of that one, <laughs> uh, my Vipers lost to your Battle Hawks. Yeah. But, uh, but oh yeah, my big question to you: Are you dropping the Battle Hawks now that the Panthers are in the same league, or uh, how are you going to go about this? The Battle Hawks will always have a special place in my heart. Oh. But I'm a Michigan Panthers fan. Have oh. been since 1983, so I've got to support them, even though I don't like their the helmet. 
<laughs> it's it's a bad redesign, my yeah. my opinion. All right. Uh, anything else that you thought of well, um, before we go nope, on to uh, birthdays today? I just hope that is a sufficient amount of UFL talk for <laughs> for people out there who say we don't cover the UFL enough. Well, yeah. finally, hey, look, there's some news, and we finally had enough to talk about. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're switching our whole focus after this. We're uh, going to be taking a little break, and and when we come back, it's going to be all UFL, indoor football, arena football. And we're going to try to talk. Like I want us to talk about. We'll talk about some of the other leagues and the upcoming events, right. but. I, I, there's a couple other leagues out there we haven't really touched on. I feel like, you know what? We are the world of football. I want us to try to at least, because it's hard to keep up with every football league. Yeah. But yeah. And in the past, we have we have done every score from from the leagues that we did do. And maybe we'll need to do like uh, the top three scores from each of these leagues, like we've done with some of the uh, the college maybe. levels of well, college. Maybe. We'll figure football. it out. We got some restructuring we're going to try to do. Right. So we'll see how that works. Yeah. Different approach uh, when we come back. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Today's birthday is February 13th. Today is the birthday of wide receiver Randy Moss. He turns 47 years old today, played his college football at Marshall, uh, he was the 21st overall pick in the 1998 NFL Draft by the Minnesota Vikings. Played 15 NFL seasons. He was with the Vikings from 98 to 2004. The Oakland Raiders from 2005 to 2006. New England Patriots 2007 to 2010. And he also played for the Tennessee Titans and the Minnesota Vikings in 2010. Then he retired, but he came back in 2012 to play one season for the 49ers. And is now he currently an NFL analyst. I don't remember him coming back to the 49ers. I, I, didn't I don't either. know why that is. Yeah. Know. And he was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2018. As he did. He was one of the best receivers I've ever watched yeah. play. He was I good. Mean, as much as we hate, yep. he wasn't a lion. He was yep. on the other side. We had to watch With him. Minnesota? Yeah, I hated him when he was in oh, I mean, he, and same how I feel about Justin Jefferson now. It's like a great, phenomenal talent. I hate that we have to play against him twice a year. And Randy Moss was that for a long time. Like him, Adrian Peterson was like, how do you stop this guy, Detroit? Yeah. Like, come on. Well, they better figure it out for next year. I have Justin Jefferson better watch out. <laughs> and on this date in 1936, the Boston Redskins received permission from the NFL to relocate to Washington, D.C. They had been uh, the Boston Redskins from 1933 to 1936. They were also known as the Boston Braves when they first became a team in 1932. Wow, what a so, good little factoid. Yeah. All right, uh, we do have two obituaries today also. The first one is Rod Sherman, a wide receiver in the NFL and the American Football League, has passed away at the age of 79. Sherman played college football at USC and was selected in the fourth round of the 1966 NFL Draft by the Baltimore Colts. He was also the seventh overall pick in the 1966 uh, American Football League redshirt draft by the Oakland Raiders. He signed with the Raiders and played for the team in 1967. He also played for the Cincinnati Bengals in 1968. Uh, then he uh, went back and played for the Raiders from 1969 to 71. He was with the Denver Broncos in 1972, and he finished his uh, playing career with the Los Angeles Rams in 1973. All right, and our final obituary this week is that of Ken Fritz, who was a guard in college, has passed away at the age of 66. Fritz played college football at The Ohio State University and was selected in the 10th round of the 1980 NFL Draft by the Pittsburgh Steelers. However, he never played in the NFL. He is best known as the player who held back Ohio State head coach Woody Hayes on the sideline late in the 1978 Gator Bowl after the legendary coach struck Clemson linebacker Charlie Bauman, who had just intercepted a pass from Buckeyes quarterback Art Sch uh, Schleister. Schleister. Wow. And that's I've a never, big long. What's I've all never one had to say sentence. that out loud. Yeah, I've Art, read it, never said it. Art Schleister. He also played in the arena football. The league, punch too. that led to Hayes being fired. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't remember, I don't think I was actually watching that game, but I was watching the high, college highlights that night, um, and that was that was everywhere. You know, the guy intercepted a pass and ran, you know, returned it 10, 15 yards, ran into the uh, sideline of the Ohio State Buckeyes, and uh, Woody Hayes went over, went over and just punched him in the throat. I feel like you, because I re-listened to our Super Bowl show from last year today, mm -hmm. just to kind of prep for today's Super uh -huh. Bowl show. I feel like this story about Woody Hayes came up. It it could have been. I don't know if it was in your history lesson for Black History Month. No. Or if it was just some been. other birthday or related anniversary in there. Hmm. Um, 
But yeah, I, this story came up about him punching a player in the throat. No, that would have been you know the Gator Bowl. It's probably like on New Year's Day. But mm. uh, yeah, I'd, I'd have to go back and <laughs> get the context. But yeah, that's yeah. the second time today I've heard this story. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it might be because of you. I don't know. Mm, could be. All right, uh, upcoming events calendar. Thursday, February 29th through Sunday, March 3rd, the NFL Scouting Combine will take place in Indianapolis, like the it always has. Underwear been. Olympics. Mm-hmm. Uh, Friday, March 1st, the LFL or LF- LFA yep. Liga de Football Americano Profesional. Yes. <laughs> will begin over at, well, down in Mexico. Uh, we, we covered their championship game last year. Yeah, and I I mean I follow them on Instagram, so like I, I want to do a little more. Like this is one of those leagues where it's like there's players that I think have jumped to the CFL from this league, you know. Okay. Uh, but I want to, you know, try to look at it a little more closely. And they're going to play March 1st, so we're going to be off when their season starts, unfortunately. We're kind of aiming for coming back when the indoor football league starts. But hopefully we can come back with, some, I don't know, some... Some scores. Some scores or some stories from mm. uh, scores or stories from the uh, Liga de Football Americano Profesional. <laughs> I can't do it. You rolled your tongue really good for that. that I, really good. Being uh, half Italian, I can pronounce the words in Italian and Spanish very well. Oh. Don't know what I'm saying, but I know how to pronounce them when I read them. That's a very <laughs> scary thing to think about, but <laughs> as being a quarter Italian, I don't have that ability. Yeah, yeah it skips a generation. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Friday, March 15th, the National Arena League season begins. Um did I say Saturday? That was Friday, March That's 15th. a Friday, yep. Saturday, March 16th, the IFL, Indoor Football League, season begins. Saturday, March 30th, the UFL season kicks off with a game between the Birmingham Stallions, formerly of the USFL, and the Birmingham Stallions of the XFL. Also... Uh, you did that backwards. Bur- 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 Birmingham Stallions, the USFL champion from last year, will take on the Arlington Renegades from the XFL. of the XFL. You said the That's Stallions twice. what I meant to say. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then also that same day, the St. Louis Battle Hawks will be taking on the Michigan Panthers, and we just might be at that. Game. I we're gonna have to do it. Yeah, get your tickets now. Yep. Uh, two teams that we've seen in person at their home stadiums. By the way, actually, yeah, <laughs> when we'll they were in to, different we'll, leagues, we'll be able to say that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, April twenty fifth. April twenty fifth through the twenty seventh, the NFL draft in Detroit. Uh, also on April twenty seventh, the thirty third Arena Football League season begins. And that same day, the 27th, the Women's Football Alliance season begins. Women's Tackle Football. Uh, I think I was looking at their um, website. They have like 62 teams around Dang. the country. But they have a couple of divisions, like a oh, yeah, tier one so and many, tier yeah, two type. So many yeah. teams and divisions and tiers and whatnot. Well, good because, for them, though. Because I try to keep a, a little spreadsheet of, of the, the teams playing this year, and I just put a placeholder for the... WFA, I, I didn't want to put 62 teams yeah. on there, but they're, they're, they are all over the country. They, but, that, you know, that league as well, we should try to... They have a team in Grand Rapids. Ooh, I did not know that. Awesome. Uh, Grand yeah, Rapids Tidal maybe. Wave and uh, the Detroit... What was the... I forget the Detroit team's name. But, yeah, so there's two teams here in Michigan. Oh, I'll have well. to look up their schedule this year. I mean, we'll who's ever said there's such a thing as too much football? We could, no. <laughs> we could knock that, that those out. Let's do it. Yep. Nobody loves more football than you and I do. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Friday, May twenty fourth, European League of Football begins. Oh yeah, they got a lot of teams that have similar name, the exact right. names of the NFL Europe teams, right. different logos or yeah. slight variations on it. This is another league that's kind of kept popping up. I see them on YouTube all the time. Uh, but I'm curious. I looked at their merch store. We were looking at the merch store before, and they got some good looking merch. Uh, <laughs> you want to get a football with their logo on it? Kind of do. I don't know how it was like. Four, well, a small one was probably fourteen pounds. However. I don't know how they convert that to American yeah, dollars. I, I didn't think they were using pounds anymore. It's I don't know. Maybe that was well. Maybe it's a euro. Then I don't know. The yeah. symbol. I was like, I assume this means pounds. I don't know. Uh, probably euro. I mean, I'm not from Europe, so whatever. I'll pay whatever uh, for a football. Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, the the euro is pretty similar to the to, to the dollar. Oh, you know, within a, within a you know. I definitely might have to look at that then. But yeah, like that might be another one we're gonna have to do a little more okay. talking about this year. And then. Uh, uh, finally, Thursday, August 1st, the Pro Football Hall of Fame game in Canton. We don't know who's going to be in that one quite yet, uh, but that'll be uh, the start of the NFL season. And uh, Saturday, August 3rd, the enshrinement ceremonies for the class of 2024, which we talked about earlier. When does uh, the CFL? You don't have the CFL regular season in there? Um, I don't have the CFL season in there. I think it's um, June something, first part of June. 
I yeah. should have that in here. It should, should have been having that in here. I, I, I want to say, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the – trying to find it right now as we talk to see preseason. So, okay, week one, the first game will be Thursday, June 6th. June 6th. I'll put it on the rundown for okay. you. Um, wow, that's weird that it's starting that late. But, I mean, they'll have preseason games in May. Right. But uh, – June sixth, the regular yep. season, and, uh, for and CFL. I'm already looking at going to a Toronto game on the 22nd of June. Ooh, okay, yeah, we better. Yeah, I got to put that vacation in then. <laughs> so many, I already got a couple approved. We're going to an arena game. Right. We're trying to. So, right. yep. All right. So yeah. you're you're good to go to the arena game. Yep. Um, yeah. So Thursday, June sixth, for the uh, CFL. CFL regular season, that will see your defending champion uh, Montreal okay. Alouettes traveling to Winnipeg. In that opening game, a rematch so, of the a rematch. But why aren't you giving the Grey Cup champion the home game to start the season? CFL. Now that's the backwards part. <laughs> we know the Chiefs are getting a home game again to sure, start the year. Yeah. Why? Why does Montreal have to go on the road? I'm sure Tim Capper is going to have to go up the CFL. Uh, yeah, I'm sure he's probably tree not happy about and yell that, at somebody. Yeah, <laughs> being a season, Tim, I feel for you. Season ticket holder, injustice. The, the uh, Montreal Alouettes and all. All right. Anything else before we? Close Man, uh, I mean, we figured this was going to be a longer show than normal between talk and Super Bowl. Right. It's our final show we're going to do till uh, whatever date we decide um, on for right now. March 19th. That's yeah, four so weeks. We're just aiming at about week, taking a month uh, off from the podcast. To, to reset every, uh, how we do things and what we're going to talk about and how we're going to Because so, initially we were just leagues. aiming at not missing any indoor football stuff. But with, I mean, unfortunately, the you know, we like we just mentioned, you got... Uh, Liga de Football Americano Profesional right. uh, starting up, but <laughs> so we'll miss a couple weeks of that, but we'll get right back into it. Um, after that, I'm yeah, I don't I mean, want to come back at least by the UFL season because, yeah, I mean, last year we had to go straight into the XFL season, so we figured, look, let's at least get four weeks in. We kind of need it, there'll still be videos, you're still going to get your history, mo- uh, history lesson yep. videos for the next uh, three Thursdays. Uh, Kyle and I are at least going to do one more just lying around soon. Okay. I have several other video ideas uh, in, percolating in my head. And we're also talking about maybe doing some videos about some of these leagues about before they start up that we could talk about. So maybe uh, Liga de Football America, uh, American Professional could be one of those videos. So uh, looking forward to it. I mean, there's a lot of stuff we want to try. I mean, yep. and we'll see what happens. Yep. Uh, but we do need maybe... Just a little bit of a break. Yep. We do need some time to uh, uh, take a take a breath. You need a you need a time to take a vacuum cleaner to this office. The man cave here. Yeah, you, you were talking about taking a picture of all the signs you got on the wall, but you got all this other junk in the way. I'm like, you're gonna have to do some serious cleaning before you can take some pictures of your new fancy wall. Yeah, too much junk around here. <laughs> I'll get working on it. Yeah, but hey, it's look. I can't remember the last time we had a break. It's been a couple of years. It, yeah, it was two years ago. I think it was 2022 when we took five weeks off after the Super Bowl. And that was the first break we ever really took. So, yeah. I mean, I'm down with having a little break. It'll be nice not to have to convene every Tuesday. But, <laughs> well, we'll uh, we'll hit the ground running when we do come back. Oh, yeah. With, we, with a new energy. I, I hope so. Uh, but, hey, we appreciate everybody sticking along for the ride. Uh we know that while we have a little bit of a break, football season never ends. No. Like, no. So. When, when does the new NFL year start? Did, the league that, year uh, starts March, like what, mid-March. Was it mid-March? I thought it was like the first week in March. Uh, maybe. Um, I forget. We talked anyway. about it, I think, before. Yeah. But it starts up b- before we come back. Yeah. So we'll, I'm sure we'll have a bunch of NFL news. We'll probably have a nice long show to come back to with catching up all on all the stuff, the we, stuff missed we missed over the last four weeks and NFL stuff and other leagues. You know, it'll probably be Randy sitting there in a Hawaiian shirt drinking out of a coconut. Uh, <laughs> oh, we missed all this stuff, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, that's all we've got for this week. Thank goodness. Uh, if you learned something during this podcast about the incredible amount of diversity that exists in the world of football, then we have done our job. Visit our website at theworldoffootball.com for news, links, upcoming events, original articles, videos, and more. Our email address is info at theworldoffootball.com. You can also follow The World of Football on Facebook, X, Instagram. The address is at 
at TWOF Kalamazoo. New episodes of this podcast are posted on Tuesdays and are available on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music. So you can simply ask your Alexa device to play the World of Football podcast to hear us on whatever Alexa devices you may have. You can also find the full audio version of this show on our YouTube channel. Just search for the World of Football Kalamazoo or use the handle at the World of Football in the YouTube search bar. So please spread the word, subscribe, rate, review, give us a like, leave us a comment, and let us know what you think. And please come be a part of the football conversation while we are away till March 19th. Yeah, maybe a week later. Who who knows? Oh uh, no, it'll be I'm, that. Week. I'm putting March 19th with a question mark. That's I think that's our weeks. that is our originally. Aim. I wanted five weeks off. And well, you said, be, no, we need to we need to. Talk I about think the we should be back the for the IFL. first week of the IFL and with the National Arena League starting up too. Let's. Uh, I think that should be our target. Unless something else happens, we'll put it out there. But okay. I'm thinking March 19th, and we'll have some changes to this show too. I'm. We're going to talk about this after I hit stop on the record, <laughs> but we got some changes just to I don't know make it not flow better but just change it up we you know you gotta change things up a little bit like we took the history lessons out last year um from the show just to make we're, we're still doing them we just don't do them, we just do them as videos as part of the show but, you know, we, we, we always want to do something different with the show whether it just be the intros the outros just to keep a different you know keep us on our toes so i hate change i know you do <laughs> I, I hate that's change why i do it with a passion yep and you are forcing me to make changes. Yep. I hate it. Yeah. Uh, and remember, folks, some people may love football more than we do, but nobody, and I mean nobody, loves more football than the two of us, as you can tell from what we've been talking about all day long today. Uh, so uh, until next time, when we'll try and do a better job. <laughs> yeah, right. I am Randy Snow. And I'm Adam Snow, ready for a little bit of a break. Yes, and we'll see you all in... Four a weeks? A month, yeah. All right, bye, everybody. See ya.